Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over 20 more tips that I've found in the time I've been using my Steam Deck. As before, these tips range from beginner to advanced in no particular order, and I'll bet you that you don't know all of them. As always, if you learn anything, be sure to leave a comment below and consider subscribing to the channel for more Steam Deck content. With that, let's get right into the tips. If you want some advanced functionality in game mode settings, enable developer mode. If you'd rather change the refresh rate and frame limit of the screen independently of one another, like how it was prior to SteamOS 3.5, disable the enable unified frame limit management slider in the developer settings. You can save power on the deck by disabling Bluetooth, Game Rumble, haptics, and enabling offline mode and then disabling the Wi-Fi. This saved an average of about 3 watts on the LCD Steam Deck and 2.1 watts on the OLED Steam Deck over the course of a full battery charge. Wondering where all your storage went? Get the File Light app from the Discover Store and have it scan either slash home or the SD card to find exactly which files are using space. Want to play a game that isn't on Steam but another launcher? Try the Heroic launcher for Epic or GOG games, or Lutris and or Bottles for the rest. You can play most Ubisoft, Blizzard, or EA games this way, and they're super easy to use. If you want a ton of extra functionality in game mode, install the Decky plugin loader to use a bunch of cool plugins. If you guys want to see a video on the install process and my personal favorite plugins, please let me know in the comments below. If you want a controller that allows for mouse control, consider a DualSense. It falls short in a few areas, but I have a video up here showcasing how I fixed each of them, so make sure to check it out. If you have a computer locally with a game already installed, your deck can install the same game super quickly by downloading the files from there instead of downloading it from the internet again. Just make sure that you have Game File Transfer Over Local Network enabled on both deck and PC in the download options, and it should work automatically. If you have a large game library, you can hot swap micro SD cards with different games, and the deck will automatically use the files on the new card. This is great if you have a lot of party games or emulation, and don't want to fill up your internal storage with them since you don't want to play them all the time. Install Cry Utilities for better performance, crash fixes, and some nice utilities for storage management. I have an entire video dedicated to showing what it does and how it works up here, so if you're interested, please go check it out after this one. If you have some games that haven't been rated by the Steam Verified system, or are rated as unsupported, you can force your deck to run any game in the Steam catalog by toggling Enable Steam Play for all other titles. Do note that compatibility will vary and some games may not run at all or have really bad performance. It depends on the game. SteamOS ships with Proton to run games made for Windows, but sometimes using the official stable version doesn't have the best results. Install Proton GE using the ProtonUp QT desktop application for some added experimental fixes for games and sometimes better performance. Do you notice big FPS dips when swinging the camera around in-game? Set a manual GPU clock in the quick access menu. Set it at the lowest you can while keeping a stable frame rate during camera swings, and you'll likely have much better frame pacing. The caveat, though, is that battery life could be worse with this enabled. Rather than going for the most FPS possible, you'll likely have a better experience by setting the maximum frame rate between 30 and 40 for most AAA games, and 50 to 60 for most indies. If you disabled unified frame management, make sure that you set the refresh rate of the display to an even multiple of the maximum frame rate for the best experience. In general, you want the line on the frame time graph on the level 2 to 4 overlays to be the flattest possible. If you have Wi-Fi connectivity or speed issues, try disabling Enable Wi-Fi Power Management, but keep in mind that the Wi-Fi chip will drain more power in this mode. I've found that this doesn't make as big of a difference on the OLED deck, but the LCD deck can benefit from the increased power quite a bit. 
If your external display is flickering or doesn't look quite right, make sure to set the resolution and refresh rate to something supported by your display and cable. For example, I had a really bad flickering when I was trying to use my old Switch HDMI cable because it only supports up to 1080p 60. On screen now are a list of protocols and maximum supported resolutions and frame rates. Make sure to get a cable that suits your use case and display. If you want to run a beta version of SteamOS or the Steam client itself, enable Show Advanced Update Channels in the developer settings. You'll get cool new features, but it might be less stable. If you want the very newest stuff, then set the channel to Main. I personally run Stable on my daily driver and Preview on my modded deck. You can save a lot of battery life by enabling a TDP limit in the overlay. The LCD deck and the OLED decks handle this a bit differently, so go check out my friend The Fox's video up here if you're interested in that. But both will extend your battery life by limiting the amount of power that the chip can pull. Enable the performance overlay to see what your performance and possible bottlenecks are when setting options in games, but turn it off afterwards if you don't want to turn the entire game into a benchmarking effort. The level 2 overlay is good if you're playing a 16x9 game since it'll fit in the letterbox just up above, but the level 4 overlay has all the details if you need more in-depth info. And lastly, if you want to record your performance or customize the overlay to your liking, then you can do what I do for benchmarking. Install Mango HUD from the Discover Store, write a custom config file using their template, and start your game with the following launch arguments. I personally use left shift plus Z to toggle the overlay and right shift plus M to toggle performance recording, but you can use whatever you want. If you want my exact config, feel free to check out the SDHQ article of this video, since I've attached my entire config file there for everybody's use. All right, that's 20 more tips for the Steam Deck, from quality of life to performance, and I'll bet you didn't know at least one of them. As always, thank you to my patrons, YouTube members, and super thanks for supporting me. If you learned anything in this video, make sure you leave a like and a comment what you learned down below, and I hope this helped everyone enjoy the deck just a little bit more. As always, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Uh, quickly, 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 quickly. Now I sound condescending. Why is local so hard? Or Lewis, who the fuck is Lewis? Hold on, I'm just, I'm just gonna take a second. Skatman.